Oh, hey, so I have been a proponent of home gyms since I started my fitness journey. And over the years, I've accumulated some tips and tricks, hacks, if you will, on how to save money and still get a great experience at home. A lot of these, in fact, pretty much all of them, can be found at your local Home Depot. So without further ado, let's get into them. Tip number one, pipe insulation. You can find these in the plumbing section. I use these cut up into whatever size I want as a cheap version of a fat grip. So I cut these up and put them on my pull-up bar just to expand the rather rough and small one inch diameter bar there. You can also use them as padding if you don't want. If you don't want to buy something like this for padding when you're squatting, you can cut up a piece, put this on your barbell for that purpose, or just to expand the grip size on anything that you could wrap this around. Next, this next tip is a two for one. First, we have these eye bolts. A couple dollars for this and a washer and in a nut. So that, depending on your hole spacing here, you can pop this in, washer in the back, thread the nut. And now you've got various anchor points. I've got a few of these around my cage. Followed by the second tip, carabiners. These things are probably dollar, 50 cents, something like that. Usually sell them in like a bucket at Home Depot. Go look where they do the key duplicates. You'll find them there likely. If you have stuff like resistance bands, make for quick connections. There's that. Alternatively, attachments you'll buy typically come with carabiners, but sometimes they're rather small. So we try to make for good storage. But when your attachments come with really tiny ones, they're kind of shitty, you can upgrade them for a dollar. Look at that. Okay, next. Down here. Hello. So, rubber flooring. From everything that I've seen online, despite the prices you might find per square foot on your rubber flooring, rubber tile options, it usually goes overboard when you have to pay for shipping. So unless you can find a tractor supply nearby for horse stall mats or you have tiles in stock somewhere or you're buying them secondhand, buying these new online and shipping them from anywhere, even Amazon, is gonna make the price ridiculous at the end of the day. The hack that I have for you is that Home Depot sells these tiles and allows you to ship them to the store, a local Home Depot, for free. That keeps the price per square foot exactly as is. All you have to do is just go buy and pick them up if you wait for shipping. You're gonna wait for shipping anyway to your house, but instead of paying for it, just have it sent to the store as if it was in stock. So compare wherever you're looking at rubber floor tiles to the final price of putting the exact amount you want in your cart in Home Depot and having it shipped to the store. So check those. While I've got you down here, let's go to my next tip. Foam tiles. Now, this is no surprise. These are very inexpensive and very popular for home gyms. They're not recommended for anything that's load bearing or any, you don't want to use these either for uh, doing any kind of lifts on because it's rather an unstable uh, platform. So that's not what this is about. So these instead are used for a couple different purposes. Because you can buy them rather cheap, I buy a pack, I cut them up into quarters, I, with some spray adhesive, I glue a couple together just so they're easier to manage. And I use these as makeshift yoga blocks. They're great for uh, padding, whether you want to put your knees down for whatever exercise. But my main use is when I'm deadlifting and I will, uh, I'll demonstrate with this easy bar while it's down here instead of my barbell, but I will lift up a weight if I don't have, like currently I don't have a large 45 pound plate in my arsenal, but even if I did, or I'm just using different plates of varying sizes. If I want to change the height at which my bar is raised and starting, I can use these. I can remove them if I want to go lower. And they also double for a nice landing zone so you're not hitting something a lot tougher. Additionally, and this is just me, sometimes I'm doing stretching or groundwork and you know these rubber floors are nice and all, shock absorbent, but they're still rather tough. If you want to save your tailbone and your joints, you want something softer to do your floor work on. 
rather than using a yoga mat, which you have to roll and unroll every time, and it's kind of, it's not breathing when it's rolled up, I just use these two, link them together real quick. And I've got this nice mat, and it actually fits rather nicely right here. I'm doing groundwork, and then when I'm done, quickly out of the way. Cool. Inexpensive way to get a nice padded mat. They can move some yoga blocks that are pretty versatile for various purposes. There we go. Let's move on. Next up, I recommend buying furniture padding. You can buy them in larger blocks like this, and then you just cut them up to size. They have adhesive, oop, caught it. They have adhesive backs, so it's really easy to pick your surface like these J-cups and then attach them in place. Therefore, you reduce the metal-on-metal -metal contact, therefore preserving the finish on both your rack, J-cup, and your bar for a little bit longer. Reduces the noise, comes for a softer re-racking. Easy. Speaking of preserving your finish, my last tip is this. This can of spray paint, you can find of course in the paint aisle, is called Rust Reform by Rust-Oleum. It's my quick, cheap, and easy way to restore, reform, rusty old, bare steel, things like barbells and weights. And in fact, does it work? Well, if you like the way this bar looks and these plates look, and these plates look, then you can check out my videos on both the plates and the barbell, how I killed some of the rust, stopped it with this, and finished it with another coat of your desired finish, in my case, matte black. This is overall a really quick and expensive way to just cover any rusty old equipment and give it the desired finish that you want. I think it looks great. I like the all black look. I could add color to these if I wanted to. I don't and it holds up really well. The plates are holding up phenomenally. The barbell also holds up great. The knurling has not been compromised. I get that question a lot. And sliding plates in and out of the sleeve here, completely fine. You can see some scuff marks, totally acceptable. You'd get the same thing on the bare metal finish. And honestly, it's metal on metal. The only thing is the finish does get worn out right here, wherever the plates are loaded only when I'm doing deadlifts and if I'm slamming the weights a lot. But all you gotta do is a little spurts. I'm not gonna do it because <laughs> it's not ventilated in here at the moment. All you gotta do is a little spurts and you're covered it right back up. Good as new. Easy. $7 a can or something like that. And it looks like you have factory finished equipment. Boom! It looks sick. It's just murdered out. Yeah. And there you have it. Those are my tips on quick home gym hacks that you can find at Home Depot. Save some money, get the job done. Hope you liked it. If you have any inexpensive home gym hacks, especially if they can be achieved by visiting your local Home Depot, let me know in the comments. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thanks for watching.